Good evening, Queerdom. This is Ben TV, and this is our first very special one hour show. That's right, tonight we have extra bits. Um, tonight on the show, it's a huge, hairy, creepy show. There's lots of different things going on. But first, without any further ado, let's introduce our panel members this evening. Right down on the end here, we have um, our virgin squealer for this evening. He's a big mover and shaker behind the scenes here, Michael. Hi, Michael. Yeah. Okay, right next to him is uh, a lady that has been rumoured to be the missing twin sister of KD Lang. You know her as Gillian. Yeah. Actually, I look like your twin sister. We, we do. We're the same mind school, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That's why we've ended up in the set with the same. Very yeah. Bobsy twin sister. You, you can see it now. There we go. <laughs> Now, down on the end here, we have a man that's known by many and had by few, Mr. <laughs> Peter O'Grady. I'm trying. <laughs> and right next to him, a lady that really doesn't need any introduction, but the... Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa! Yeah. Goodness gracious me. <laughs> Look, no hands. Uh, a lady that is uh, rumoured to have been hired uh, recently by Channel 31 as the new test pattern. It's Shay. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Shay. Oh. And joining us tonight is our guest Squealer. Um, he, his alter ego is a media megastar, also quite controversial and confronting. His name is Drew, aka Miss Shitty. Hello, Drew. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Although I was told um, it's just shitty. Shitty. Generally. Drop the miss, just shitty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got a question to ask you a bit later, but uh, we'll get on to that in a minute. The first thing that we need to talk about is. Um, well, Julian, actually, you're the first thing that you're going to talk about, aren't you? So, uh, over to you, my dear. Well, what I'm not going to bore you with talking about myself. Not, not in this oh. segment, anyway. Um, <laughs> but it's all been very serious news, and we'll try and stay away from that, I think, because, you know, lots of election stuff, lots of uh, people dying in East Timor, possibly our own Australians um, mm -hmm. coming up. But um, one thing I did want to mention, surprise, surprise, at the last minute, the state government has obtained a Supreme Court injunction preventing the release of Victoria Police's findings oh, about yeah. the, uh, the awarding of the ambulance contracts, which, you know, I mean, it's totally predictable and it's a damn shame, I think, but I just wanted to mention that. Mm. Um, in Wisconsin, they've been uh, having a big drink driving campaign in America, which seems to have been fairly successful because uh, a mother this month was... Um, she was drinking, she and her son were in the car, she'd been drinking, she pulled over, decided she'd drunk too much and said to her son, you drive. So the son got behind the wheel. Um, unfortunately, they haven't been having um, underage uh, campaigns and, and he was only eight years old and he was pulled up by the police and his mother's actually in trouble anyway. So, you know, nice try. How far did he go before they pulled him up? Oh, but he'd, gone, he'd gone a couple of suburbs. That's and apparently good. The, the police only realised because they were driving behind and they just saw this little tuft of hair, <laughs> tuft of hair sticking up. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Oh, and he says, I didn't cute. want to do it. My mummy made me do it and she told me what lane to stay in. Oh, oh now see, I saw something sad. like that exactly shocking. the same on Blue. Healers. Yes, oh. right. yes. <laughs> <laughs> life, imitating life, life imitating art. That's right. That's yeah. where they yeah. get it from. Well, well I have to mention one of my favourite people, Susan Maroney, has been at it again. The aptly named Susie Maroney. <laughs> I can say that because she's in Cuba. It's, <laughs> right. it's nicely, nicely timed. Um, she swam all the way to Cuba, and the problem is, of course, that people keep flying her back. I mean, you know, really. <laughs> <laughs> she's gone all that way. Just leave it to it. And I think that that's why she's been breaking these records. Because she's trying to get away, but somewhere she says, oh, we'll fly her back, and she's keep like, too exhausted to protest. <laughs> There's this picture of her. Look how, look how depressed she is. Look, she's, she doesn't she's swam it. all the way to, to, to Cuba, and... Um, and look how, how upset she is that actually somebody's there meeting her. It's her own brother, in fact, who's gone all the way over to meet her. And, um, and he's going to bring her all the way back. So sorry, uh, Susan Maroney is, is about to uh, come back and, um, and set off again for even further shores. Sorry to hear that, Susie. Yes, it's yeah. very sad. But, sorry, I was watching the news and her, they were saying her shark cage was starting to fall to pieces. It was. She was, she was dragging her down, <laughs> the, sinking. I think it was Castro. That was a gift from Castro. So <laughs> when they said it. that, I was like, mm. Next. <laughs> doing, us, doing us a favour. Absolutely. <laughs> Drag. Mm. I just put just vertical fins on it. It wouldn't oh, die. Well. Down under. <laughs> it could be. But would we be worse off? The last bit of news is that um, Tourette's syndrome apparently. Um, 
Hobbit slap. You see, people can swear and twitch because they have Tourette's syndrome are more in control of their actions than we've been thinking. Uh, is it totally true? So the symptoms of Tourette's range from excessive twitching to extreme bouts of an inappropriate swearing as opposed to appropriate Hobbit slap. <laughs> <laughs> But apparently, um, they're more in control than we think. They, they made this guy hold on to this thing and, 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 and he could grasp it before he had a tick. So it's like they know they're going to have it and they actually let themselves give into so it. So is it attention or something? They want this one attention? Or no, it says that most people, have the urge, most people have the urge to say or do inappropriate things but decide not to. Oh. So, you've got Tourette's syndrome. Oh. You just do it. Oh. You oh. Just Being gay, it's a decision. Bad manners. <laughs> Maybe yes. I have. Oh, oh. Does that mean we've got bad manners? <laughs> Uh, it's bad manners. <laughs> no, well, I was just saying that. That maybe was a band it's in the eighties. Bad manners. <laughs> Does that mean? Talking about, no, I'm not going to go there. Does that <laughs> mean I've got Tourette's? Oh. <laughs> I mean, do you think the things you say are inappropriate? No. Well, then you don't. I don't, do I? I? No, I don't think that. that's just. <laughs> there goes my <laughs> disability <laughs> support <laughs> pension. <laughs> we all do, and you don't. Mm. Okay, Peter, have you got yeah. something to bring to us? Yes, I do. The I guess the big news in the gay world was um, Michael. How do you say Portillo? Yes. Michael, Michael Portillo has admitted that he's actually done the biz, mm. had a bit of male to male sex. But the funny thing is, it's like, um, depending on what paper you read, it's like, so um, one, one says senior conservative reveals homosexual parts, like he's just done it years and years ago. But in the sun, it says Brits ready for openly gay PM. It's just like, he's not actually openly gay. gay. Yeah. yeah and apart I, from that, I mean, he's very, very nice to, to have those sexual leanings, but he's, a, he's actually. <laughs> I'm uh, quite a fascist, actually, so I don't know whether, <laughs> well, yeah. whether you, you still want him to it be. It goes back to his student days. Yeah, well, that's what he, like, he, he says in here. He says, I want to make it perfectly clear that all the time I've been in public life, there has been nothing of this sort whatsoever. So yeah. it's still like that whole, like, you know, oh, yeah, I used to do so it, so I don't do it anymore. Once. Well, see, my father did that. When I told he didn't him, inhale. When I told <laughs> my father I was gay, he said, that's all right, son, at 16 I had a sexual experience with a man. I went, no! <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I wanted this to rock your world, baby, and it didn't. I want to know away. I wasn't very happy at all, but anyway, did you go into that's my uh, hey. No, no, I didn't hang around for detail, <laughs> Peter. I was grossed out enough that he just mentioned it to me. So, um, look, we're running a little bit behind time, Pete. So I'm just going right. to cut you off. That's I wanted right. because I wanted to talk about Drew and um, uh, the show that Drew and uh, Bed TV people would have seen Drew on is uh, Fairy Stories. Now, for those of you that haven't seen Drew or Miss Shitty, let's uh, we've got some footage in going on, so if we can uh, pull that footage up now. Yep. There it is. Drew, have we... Why, 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 thank you, God damn you. I, 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 I was so afraid that, that, I, that no one would ever be out of here or see me again. <laughs> why, I, I am standing to erase you, you goddamn asshole. God damn you. Oh, no. Oh, no. Queen's Parade? And, and, and we're boots on Parade? It don't look like it much to me around here. Then again, I ain't looking down Sydney Tower now, am I? Oh, Sydney. Yuck. Hate Sydney. Oh, Auckland. Auckland's much better than Sydney now. Hey, Auckland Sky Tower. That's it. Oh, wow. There we go. Yay. There we go. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. All right. Now, when I first heard the name Miss Shitty, I thought, mm, what's she angry about? <coughs> what's she upset <laughs> about? Why is she so shitty? So what is, what was the reasoning, what was the thought process behind the shitty, or was there no thought process? Was it just uh, something that happened? She was just born, birthed? I, a lot of my friends are drag queens, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I don't know, I just sort of uh, wanted to get part of, uh, get involved in all of that sort of thing anyway, I suppose, but I, I thought, like, I mean, basically I'm a visual artist, and uh, I always go by the premise that um, an artist has a responsibility to sort of sort of redefine the cutting edge and mm -hmm. sort of, you know, redefine the accepted definition of what art is, in a sense. So I thought, well, I'll just apply that to drag, in a sense. So I'm just sort of really trying to push the limits with what drag is. So it's about breaking down those boundaries. Absolutely, and absolutely. Sort of again, you know, yeah. I mean, you either love her or you hate her, and that's it. Okay, you know? yeah. 
How do other drag queens take you or take Miss Shitty? Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, as, as I said, you know, so, some people really love me, some people really hate me, you know, and, yeah. and I think it's probably just a matter of whether or not they actually understand what I'm on about. So maybe it's an intelligence thing, I don't really know, <laughs> but you know, we won't get into that too <laughs> much anyway. Um, carried away with the part at all, because I remember um, speaking to Jeffrey, the producer, I think, right. and um, yeah. at one stage he said, yeah, I've got two episodes in the can, but the way the actors keep going, I've That's now right. got five. Right, um, yeah. Like they've really got into their part. So is that what yeah. happened to you? you oh, really got into takes it. Takes over, completely takes over. Yeah, yeah, just everything. Like shitty smokes, whereas I don't. Yeah, you know, so if I go it's clubbing, I'll smoke it's cigarettes. It's like Tourette syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> not me swearing. Just, I told you. I told you. Right. Oh, I'm an ex. No, it wasn't me. I'm not an ex murderer. <laughs> <laughs> My alter yeah, ego. Yeah. I don't <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't remember that Sybil. She had 16 personalities oh, yeah. in Sally Field. Right. Oh. Twisting her lip and whatnot. Is that including her own personality, the original one? We yes, it was just a person to do like sort of 25 audition speeches in, <laughs> in one movie. <laughs> All right, guys, let's, we're moving into the last piece of our first segment here. <laughs> and uh, the, I'm just, our, our floor, our, sorry, EP is going, pointing at his pants. What's the, what's the <laughs> shitty pants Oh, my shitty thing pants. Deal. Well, look, I, I sort of think, like, you know, like 10% of the population is supposed to be gay, you know, and I only sort of honestly believe that 10% of the population are currently walking around with shit in their pants. <laughs> you know, so I just got <laughs> to... Right. You know, I mean, it's all about, it's all about, you know... It's a being euphemism, in a minority group and just pushing the limit once again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not yeah. you can't pay your laundry bills. It's just <laughs> no, a statement. No, not, not in the river of Babylon. Okay. <laughs> all right. We're getting a huge one up, guys. And girls, if you like your legs big and and hairy, come back after the break because we've got some big hairy legs for you. Oh, Stay tuned, wait. this oh. is Man TV. <laughs> 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 oh, lovely, everyone this is squeal you're watching bent tv okay now um i just wanted to start off with some community announcements we had um eva from amnesty international on the other week we've got ca the candle day coming up very shortly it's the 22nd and 23rd of october um as support of amnesty international so grab your candles or your badges and support them if you want to become a volunteer ring eva on 1800 808 157. 808 157. 1 800. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, ben TV fundraiser coming up also. Yes, yes, yes. Very yes. shortly. Now, any of you that went to the last one had a lot of fun. Right. We have got. Uh, of you. <laughs> 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 We've Tim, on for you. <laughs> some special guests that we've had here on Squirrel coming back. Tim McHugh. Mm -hmm who we had on, and the amazing Raymond. So if you want to get down and get yourself a fake tattoo for the evening, that's at Club 44 on the 17th of October. Yes. So right get on down nice. there. We will be there. Um, doors open from 8 o'clock. We could have a pie the panellists, couldn't we? Well, we have to stick our faces. Pie the panellists, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. There's a few of those. <laughs> All right, the other thing we've got is uh, the minus 18, the, their next uh, party's coming up on Wednesday, September the 22nd. At the Pill, 6 to 11.30, minus 18 is a fully supervised, no drugs, no alcohol, under 18 only event. Oh, so oh, get along to that. I, I <laughs> wish they had something like that when I was a kid, you know, because I, I went to mm. basketball discos and all that sort of stuff. It was very hard. hetero, yeah. but I won Disco King seven years in a row. I just want to say that. Hard. Okay, we have been joined <laughs> on the... It was last week. We have been joined. Um, if you're wondering, the, uh, if my voice is going, uh, we have, uh, uh, for want of a bit, a Spider-Man on the show with us this evening, Bert Canduccio. Yay! Yeah. But you're from the Victorian Insectarium, that's yes. correct? Yes, yes. That's and right. you've brought some of my favourite friends in to well, have a look with us this evening. We're all about to get over our phobias. Well, that's right. Yeah. Um, Speak for uh, I, thought I, I thought I'd start here. Tell me, how many times have you oh. seen these things hanging behind your curtains or behind your yeah. cupboards? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, the, the wonderful thing about these is every time you've seen one of these, most people think that they found the remains of dead spiders and they all breathe a great sigh of relief. Uh -huh. That's yeah. the good news. The bad news is that this means that the spider has grown too large for 
a shell, it means you've got a bigger one. Oh, oh, right. Now, um, what happens in most cases is the spider drops down from a piece of silk at night, yeah. opens up its back, falls out of the old shell wearing a soft new one. Now, even though most spiders molt and change their shells that way, some spiders can't do that. I'll tell you why, because they're too big. Oh, now, in the, in the case of um, this cast skin that belongs to a, a northern <laughs> Queensland tarantula, <laughs> they can't hold themselves um, from silk because the silk would break and the animal would die once it impacts on the ground. So what they do oh, is they actually um, <laughs> roll over on their back pop their back open, and then with a series of movements they push and peel the old shell. So the next time anybody here wears a glove, you're wearing your glove the same way the spider wears its suit of armour. Oh, so pass sweet. that around. Have a, have a, have a no, no, look at that. No. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 you'll see, yeah, you'll see the cavities there. Sorry. The with, so, right? so much for yeah. the dead ones. Yeah, so much for the dead ones. Okay. Now, a close relative of oh the spider God. is... Um, uh, an animal that we recently brought back from the Northern Flinders Ranges. Now, I'll just take this out. Now, first of all, before I take oh. her out, let me tell you something. There are no dangerous scorpions in Australia. Now, this one here <laughs> happens to be Australia's largest. Now, what I'll do is, is I'll right? tickle her. <laughs> yeah, now, I'll lift her. I'll lift her like that. Okay, now. Do we have insurance? Now, you notice, <laughs> no, you don't need it. I'll tell you why. Right. Um, you notice the sting at the end of the tail. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm I'm gonna I've immobilised that sting, so now she can't use it. And the only other part of her body that can her to the claws. So what I'll do is I'll hang on to that sting like that, okay, right, and hold on to her claws, and now I'll lean over and everybody can give it a pat and see what it feels like. Oh, yes, go, go. Yes. No, 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 no. Actually, what I've been doing. Oh, oh, I, I have four. I have four-year-old children who go for it. Oh, don't give it oh, yeah, flying. So right, how poisonous okay. is this? Really okay, nice. that's about the same no. as a bee sting. Okay. Oh, okay, because yeah, I haven't read that you can die from that, but that's absolutely uh, in, so, in some parts of the world, North Come Africa on. especially, and the southern no, United States, not, I'm sorry. that's where the world's most dangerous scorpions are. Oh, okay. okay. North Africa and the Remember southern that. United States. Okay. okay. So it would hurt. That's why I'll never be going. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> okay. Now, that's she... Funny. Uh, was one of the very first animals to crawl out of the sea, walk onto the dry land about 375 million years ago, wow. and take the first breath of air. They're like Susan Moran. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and this oh, is the animal that invented your lungs. <laughs> this animal. is the animal that invented your lungs. Now, if we turn her upside down, you'll look and you'll see some yellow windows. Oh my Ooh. God. Right? Does she now, feel that the, they think? are oh, yeah. what's left of their early ancestors' yeah, gills. gills. Right? Oh. The early ancestors' gills. And once they walked onto the dry land to protect them, they put a plate over them, and bingo, you've got an animal that can now live on the dry land and breathe Clever. out. Okay. Nice. All right, so I'll pop her back. Yes, thanks. All right. Okay, right, now, moving along, we've got um, a very interesting spider. Uh, this is alive. Now, what I'll do is I'll take her carefully out of the container. And what I'll, I'll put her on a bowl, so let's tri tip her out onto the bowl, because this is a funnel web. Oh, my God. Okay, now... Um, this is cool. I can it's a very quick okay. one. Yeah, she's very quick. Okay, now... Um, she doesn't jump, does she? She, she is uh, 12 years old, 12. and she can live for up to 20 years. Wow. Now, normally, people wouldn't see them because they spend all their lives underground, oh. and it's when people do their gardening, they disturb the soil, that's when they bring these animals up. Um, now, this one can make you feel pretty queasy for a day or two, <laughs> and you know she's very aggressive. Now, um, if I tickle her up and get her a little bit aggro... <laughs> it's like shame. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll just turn her around, because what I want to show you is I want to show you the fangs, and if I oh, yeah. get her to oh rear herself God. up, right, Look you'll see those. the size of those fangs there. Now, they work Ooh, directly up and down, so in order to bite, she must rear herself up to plunge those fangs forward. Um, it would have to be pretty yeah. angry to want to strike Well, someone. yeah, because all she's basically doing is now she feels totally vulnerable. She's using whatever means she can to protect herself. So, um, hence this sort of behaviour. Right? Be okay. Show us your biggest one. Okay, well... Uh, uh, I've yeah. had a few women size queen, Julian. Okay. You're after. Now, uh, I'll now, leave her in uh, the bowl. Look, look, and I'll there just we can see him, everyone. You can see okay. her. That was Tony's okay. backside now, there. Is the male version just as... Uh, Angry. Angry. Oh, well, yeah, the male, oh. this is interesting, the male spider mates in a particular way. What he needs to do is he needs to safeguard his sperm. Yes. So what he does is he deposits a, a droplet of silk on the ground mm. and places his semen on there. And then uh, near his mouth parts, he has some special coil tubes, which he uncoils them, draws that semen up, and then once he's protected them, he goes off marching for the female. Oh. Um, and that protects oh. the sperm from dying if it's exposed out in the air. Oh. Now, once he yeah. finds the female and he courts her, and once she accepts him, <laughs> he then... 
um, uncoils the tube and okay. locks that into position into the, into the genital opening of the female and pumps the semen into her. Wow. So basically, spiders mate by the males masturbating and then artificially inseminating the females. Oh, good God. So oh, all the male spiders okay. are now. gay that oh make handbags God. for their semen. No, she's <laughs> oh, okay. well, now what's that? Okay, right. This is um, uh, Charlotte. Now, Charlotte is about three years old, and this is a golden orb weaver. Now, there's some very interesting things about her properties of her silk. Now, if I just hang on to that with one hand, let me show oh, you. I've got a fork here. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, so I've got a fork here. Now, um, imagine if I stretch this stainless steel fork mm -hmm. um, until... Uh, the stainless steel was as thin as one single strand of her silk. Her silk is 48 times stronger than stainless steel stretched to the same wow. thickness. Wow. Now, a couple of years ago, um, some scientists working in uh, Japan actually artificially synthesised the molecular structure of silk and produced a piece of material so thin that if you hold it up to the light, the light will shine through it, and yet it's strong enough to stop a rifle bullet. And they'll be wow. using this material to hopefully get man on Mars. So there you go. Um, right. Are there many rifles? Bullets? Um, <laughs> I don't know, but um, yeah, so, so quite interesting. Now, what sort yeah. of um, a spider is that? Okay, she's called a golden orb weaver or nephilim. You, you just hold no. that twig there. Yeah. Hold that twig. Yeah, hold the twig. Hold the twig. Yeah, hold the twig. Hold the twig. And she, even if she, she crawls on you, she won't, she won't do any harm. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah, we're running okay. out of time yeah. quickly. Okay. So if we can just now, right, go yeah. down and see what happens. While you're passing that around, yeah, I've brought an interesting girl along. Okay, this is uh, one of the giant leaf insects oh from northern God. Queensland. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, here's something interesting. Normally, compared to other insect groups, stick insects are quite rare. Um, she's a vegetarian. Now, their problem is this. How do the males find the females? Well, nature's taking care of that because she's capable of producing eggs that are already fertilised without ever mating with a male. Oh, oh really? Yes. So we're right. oh, yeah. no. No. So, so, yeah. She's sticky. Okay, she's sticky, yes. Oh, and I've brought along That's another one. Camouflage, well, look, that, that's designed to mimic a dead dry leaf. This yeah. one is designed to mimic a live green one. So oh have a look. There's two different species. Oh, right. We do that! Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay, so there you go. Uh -huh. Yeah, Peter. Oh, okay, I've yeah. got... Oh, oh, why is she that's facing it. up like that? Sorry? What's They're huge, though, right? Oh, yeah, these are fairly large from the ah. tropics. Right, Sorry. okay. You know, yeah. We'll put that one back. Okay, yeah. well, I'll yeah. Thank you. Okay. We'll pop that one back there. Okay, okay. Very we'll pop that back in there. Oh, we can chat another shelf while they're looking, yeah. while they're being yeah. okay. all yeah. butch over there with those. Do you want me to pop? Yeah, yeah. 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 hold that one. She's harmless. Oh, okay. So, how local? No, honestly. These are from northern New South Wales and Queensland, but they're a local species. Oh, amazing how. Do they get along? Oh yeah, they do. Look, he's yeah. touching each other. Hello. Here I am at 31. And, and, last, but, oh and last but and last but not least, oh, yeah, no, that's right. They'll oh, just climb right. over each other. Right. Oh, and, 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 now, now somebody you. mentioned before the segment that uh, they have an aversion to cockroaches. Well, I bought oh, 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 a very interesting <laughs> one. I, I don't now, know if I can touch it. This is the baby, and this is the shell. This is the shell of the mother that gave birth to that young about 18 months ago. Now, if I put this cockroach in your cupboard, it would starve Don't to death dare. because they only feed on oh, dead oh, eucalyptus oh, leaves. Oh, okay. So they play an important role in the environment in recycling those nutrients oh, right. as well. So, And out of the estimated 4,000 different varieties of cockroaches in Australia, only six of them are pests and they were all introduced. Oh, really? Right, so it's a case of half a dozen um, introduced species giving all our yeah. natives a bad name. Yeah. They're on the way. So one, I think I think <laughs> oh like it. Shay, you are yeah. a very brave woman, that's all I can say. <laughs> I am a magnet. You mad. You mad. Magnet bugs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting what she's doing now because a lot of people have a natural aversion for these animals because oh, we inherit right. those fears from our parents when we're young and impressionable. Oh, no, oh, it's going to be close up oh, to my face. She thinks you're a tree. She thinks you're a tree. Oh, yeah, it's okay, I think I've diverted it. Yeah, so I guess I guess the message is, oh, if you want to save whales and platypus and koalas, we've got to start looking after these sorts of animals because they form the foundation of the food yeah, chain. No, so right. by preserving these sorts of things, the environment will be in a How lot better way. How do you get people way. to appreciate them and not sort of freak out like we've got Well, um, I guess uh, even though they're not cute and cuddly, everybody here is fascinated. They're, they're curious. Yeah. And it, we use that natural cute. curiosity about that. Yeah. To, uh, to get people... Cuddly. Where you can go and see a lot of insects? Not really. Um, we're more or less the only um, education uh, facility that deals mm -hmm. with these sorts of animals in the state, and we could tend to get a lot of visitors and school children, especially in uh, Jewish school groups. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, school right. Right. Just started. Just started. That's right. Yeah. So, That's right. out there, if you want to uh, do something a little bit interesting and a little bit sort of out there and try and kill your 
Arachnophobia? It hasn't worked for me today. <laughs> but, you know, stranger things have happened. All right. Yeah. No Grab yourselves a cuppa. We're going to tick off for a little bit. Uh, support our sponsors, for they support us. Thank you very much, Bert, for coming in and yes. scaring yeah. the living daylights out of me. Yes, guys. Coming back, we've got Fritz from the Jamie Coleman story coming oh. up next. So come back and see us here on Squill. <laughs> this is Ben TV. Yeah. Okay, welcome back. This is Bent TV and you are watching Squeal. Mm. You are. <laughs> Squeal. We have recovered from the spiders. I'm sorry if you actually saw that I was not here for most of the last <laughs> segment. But as I said, I tried to cure my arachnophobia. It didn't work. We have been joined by Fritz Martin from the Justice for Jamie Coleman story. Hi, Fritz. Hi, Paul. Oh, that's <laughs> right. We said that before. Yeah. What's his name again? <laughs> it's actually called the Justice for Jamie Campaign. Campaign. Yeah. And it is for, for Jamie Coleman. And I'm the convener of the group, uh, support group for him, that uh, we believe that he was wrongly convicted. Jamie is the guy that was convicted of murder uh, in uh, March this year and sentenced to 19 years jail. He's currently serving that sentence. But we're a support group uh, because we don't believe that uh, he was guilty. And we consist of about 100 people. And we've been running fundraisers all over. Over Melbourne over the last people. about 100 people, yeah. About a third of those are his family members because he's one of 11, 12 brothers and sisters, so they're all involved as well. Mm. And uh, they all, and actually, there's a lot more people involved because some of the events we've put on at Barracuda and the Star and some of the other venues have involved about 100 people in the way of performers and producers and choreographers in the fashion shows and the drag shows we've been putting on. Yeah, so. Do you know? Did you know him personally? No, did you get no, no. I um, I actually. Uh, got involved with the case through a mutual friend and also through reading about it in the newspaper after he was actually convicted. Mm. But uh, I found later that he had performed for us for the club that we were running, uh, or that we still run, Lotus Club. He'd actually performed for us in 1994 and I tracked that down on the old videos. But uh, no, I didn't know him personally, but I do speak to him uh, frequently now on the telephone and go in to see him and, uh, and he's become a uh, you know, pretty close friend. And I'm close friends with his, uh, with his partner as well, mm. his boyfriend who he's been with for nine years, Chan, who's quite well known, who works at the AIDS Council and the Positive Living Centre. And he's actually, his boyfriend is the Asian guy on the poster or ad that says, which one of us is gay? It's often in Sydney. Oh, right, right. yes. Well, the Asian guy on the top left-hand corner, that's Chan, that's Jamie's boyfriend. He's, they're, they're both very well known on the gay mm. scene because Jamie was a dancer, he's a trained ballet dancer and uh, he worked at... Uh, Club 80 and he worked at Steamworks and he worked in drag shows and, and he worked as a dancer as well at the Swagman and places like that. Oh, right. Yeah. The Swagman. 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 It's gone. It's at Fernford Gully. It's yeah. gone. Is it gone? Yeah, yeah it's Swagman. gone. <laughs> you saw Debbie Reynolds at the Swagman. <laughs> Was she eating or would she <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> drinking? <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> but, uh, I, I could say we've raised a lot of money and uh, we really appreciate all the support we've had from the gay community in Melbourne because uh, without that we wouldn't have been able to raise the money and we need the money for an appeal, an upcoming appeal, which has been set for next month for the... Uh, 20th, no, 20th uh, yep. Wednesday October. the 20th of October yeah. mm -hmm. and it may go for several days and then uh, it may take a few weeks for the outcome to become known and we don't know what what'll be uh, what the outcome will be it could be an upholding of the original trial and he went through three murder trials so all the fundraising is in fact to cover legal fees yeah and we're still we're still nowhere near reaching our goal of $35,000 but we have raised uh, over $8,000 which has already been handed to the solicitors so, um, and also the ABC has made, um, uh, produced a one hour docu a radio documentary on oh. it. They've become very interested because Jamie was convicted partly on the grounds that he made a confession. And this confession was a taped recording. It's been quite well reported in the newspapers. Mm. And it was secretly taped. And it was just a taped recording of a conversation. Yeah, just give us a little bit. Yeah. I mean, what happened? What, what, was, the, what was the circumstances? Oh, basically, Jamie told a story uh, when a friend asked 
asked him uh, what, what the worst thing he'd ever done was, and he told the story that he bashed someone during oral sex, and the friend didn't believe this, so he or said that's all, or words to that effect, so he elaborated and said, oh, but the person died. And when the friend still didn't believe it, he then, uh, he then went on to say, uh, the friend said, if, I, if he had have died, I would have heard where it was. And he said, well, it was at a beat in Brunswick, and there was indeed a gentleman killed there, or found dead there, back in 1991, mm. and he was a gay man. And um, so um, once Jamie had told this story to a friend, uh, the friend passed it on to a stepfather who was an ex-policeman. He passed it on to the homicide squad. And although no one believed the story at the time, they decided to pursue it and try and get him to repeat it. And he was then introduced to an undercover policeman uh, and he led the story out of him while he was drunk and stoned. Mm. And then he told a similar story and that was what convicted him. These stories became referred to as his confessions. But Jamie's always strenuously denied uh, the charges and, you know, uh, and... Uh, so you're saying he did kill, did kill the guy? No, he, no, no, no. Uh, no. He, didn't he just even, made up a story. He, he just made up a story to satisfy his friend. He'd heard about this murder and this guy said, oh, what's the worst right. thing you've ever done? And mm. he said, and he picked this murder that he'd heard about. Mm. Oh, and that he so knew this guy would have he heard knew about some to make, it, make his story convincing. And that's all it was supposed to be, a story to stimulate his friend, because the friend was into S&M, and that's also been well documented. But Jamie himself is actually a drag performer, and he's into Betty Davis, and he's a rice queen. Um, so from a gay perspective, he's the least likely person to end up being a murderer. But that's not to say he couldn't be, but... Um, but in this particular case, he's not the murderer. Have mm. you had much opposition? Like you've got no, people no, no, sort of said no. Well. Once people know the story, once gay people understand what's happened, we've had um, overwhelming support, uh, both from performers and venue owners and the media, and the gay media, brother, sister in particular, Sydney Star Observer. Uh, we've done radio interviews with Joy about it. So we've been, uh, people, once they understand, because, you know, this guy went to court and was judged by a jury of presumably heterosexual people. So they had no other evidence. They just had him saying, oh, look, I, I, I blew this guy off and, and, and bashed him up. Yeah. And, and mm. that's, that's all they've convicted him yeah. of. Mm. And, then one, so and then once he was convicted as being guilty, that evidence... Well, the supposed evidence becomes that was, uh, it was accepted itself as gospel. Is enough, so so yeah. it becomes gospel right. after as, as People can then say, oh, he confessed to it. That's right, when it wasn't a confession. But it wasn't a confession. And okay. a tall story. The, yeah, it's a I tall think, story. I think the biggest one, well, one of the lessons <laughs> that comes out of this to me is um, the fact that we don't, shouldn't tell lies. I did it the other week too. And <laughs> well, it's true. It's true. I did it the other week. I told a little lie to cover up something else and it blew up into oh, this huge thing mm. that I had to hurt people in the end and tell oh, them no. that I'd been a liar and everything. So, oh, yeah. Awful. Always comes back to you. That's right. Always tell the truth. Always tell the truth. Mm. Just before we go on, you know, um, you sitting back there enjoying Bent TV. Now, Bent TV is a voluntary organisation. We're looking for volunteers. So if you'd like to uh, become a Bent TV member or a volunteer, come in and help make television and, and do what we do. Um, or just have your say. Ring 9663-5902. That's 5663-5902. Or you can get us at... The, I keep changing cameras on us all the time. <laughs> you can write to us at P.O. Box 2248 Paran 3181. Or if you are online, baby, get us on Bent TV. Uh, sorry, I get this wrong every week. Bent hyphen TV at <laughs> Bent hyphen TV dot Com. That's right. So come and uh, join us here at Bent TV. Also, uh, the uh, also directory is still looking for um, people to register and be part of that. So if you've got a business out there, get uh, ring the also directory on nine five one zero double five six nine. All right, now Shay, I think you're going to have a little something yes. to say to us here yes, today. Yes, I actually have a story about um, another so-called killer. <laughs> um, safety watchdogs warned yesterday of an epidemic of killer shoes <laughs> that, that has already claimed one life and injured thousands of fashionable youngsters. <laughs> Officials at the British Standards Institution are investigating the craze for platform shoes after the first recorded death. In Japan, in Japan last month, nursery teacher Misao Shimitsu suffered a fatal skull fracture after toppling from her 12.5 centimetre high platform. <laughs> 12 and a half centimetre. And I actually have 
a copy of the uh, picture of the shoes <laughs> that she was <laughs> currently wearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. let that be a lesson to you all. Do you remember that, do that doctor that came out about a year ago and said the Spice Girls are a health hazard? Yes. Remember? Because of shoes or not? No, he thought that all these the girls music? were going to get piercings and, and get swallowed. Shut but he was right. He just got the wrong sort of That's shock. thing. That was Spice Girls. the size of your calves after wearing them for a night. I know. Oh. Imagine the thing at a was dance party. Couldn't she do was the vacuuming in, in those. Good job. <laughs> no. She was found in a car. I used to vacuum in my stillies. Now, um, Michael. What are yeah. you? A couple of things. Oh, yes. This, <laughs> this is really interesting. See if you can guess this one. Arrest Officer Sue's Singer. Who do you think that's about? Mm. <laughs> Huh? Officer, <laughs> Officer <laughs> Rodriguez. <laughs> Officer Rodriguez is suing George Michael, that's right. Oh, saying why? that the release of his song and video called Outside mocked and portrayed me violating laws, he said. Oh. Officer Rodriguez also claims Michael said during interviews that the officer was waving his genitals in front of <laughs> Michael. So <laughs> What Apparently he's suing him for about suing him because he won't 15, <laughs> well, fifteen point like three million oh, dollars. Oh. He's suing him for American. because that poor policeman was very right. oh. Now would he be he's suing him for that amount of money if he wasn't a millionaire or a famous person? Mm. He wouldn't even be suing him if he was Elton John at this stage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so Elton John Elton was a bit, a bit broke. Oh, yes, right. yes. Yeah, ex, ex hubby's done the runner with all his money. Really? His manager. Oh, really? No, his, man, his manager, manager who manager. had been a lover years ago mm -hmm. and, and stuff, because oh. he just sort of, he throws credit cards over his shoulder wherever Don't he goes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, credit cards oh, over his shoulder. This is just, Bring a, me just a quick one. Going back to the spiders before and the um, insemination that we had over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's bizarre. Very bizarre. There's a gay couple, two London gay millionaires. Oh, yes. have paid a Californian woman $320,000 oh. to carry and deliver their mm. twin babies. That's one each. Okay. And they've already named them like Aspen the and Saffron. So Aspen oh. and Saffron. Aspen and Saffron. Sounds like Aspen. Well, it is a ski right, resort, uh, isn't it? As a name, or oh, Aspic. Like <laughs> beetroot and peas and Aspic. Oh. Disgusting. Oh. 320000 How much is that a month for nine months? That's a lot of money, isn't it? Yes. So, Gillian, yes. no money is <laughs> Yes, I would. Can do the sperm. <laughs> Let's do it There's now. Five. I've, 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 got got the I've got two bucks fifty. Yeah. <laughs> There's a registry form here. Somewhere, Shay. I know you yeah. put your name on it. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> I've got a quick little story here. Yes. Just, um, it's not good enough that we've got 14 year old girls and 14 year old boys stuffing themselves with steroids and, and starving themselves. Yep. We've now got little magazines for toddlers. For toddlers, um, telling them the way to dress. You know, like for th you get $300 um, clothes here, $530 embroidered gowns. So it's like, and it's, a, it's a, called SML. It's for parents who have delayed having their first child until their 30s, and for parents who, um, who don't want to compromise any aspect of their lifestyle. So basically, so for, for parents who don't think of their children as children, children uh, parents who think of children as accessories, it's horrible. Oh, more money than you got to buy, like, and it's like, yeah. you know, you can buy perfume for your two-year-old for $83. What's the story? <laughs> What's the story? Why Kids vomit everywhere. That's all you need them to do. The, yeah, the <laughs> He came in the other week to where I work and had a gap cap on and I was playing with the baby saying, oh, do you realise your cap costs more than I make in a week? <laughs> and and I got a very dirty look from that. my mother. Now Fritz, there's a, a, a fundraiser coming up yes. at the Star Hotel very yeah, shortly, there's, I there's hear. There's three coming up actually. We're dedicating the Miss, annual Miss Lotus competition next Saturday uh, to uh, the Justice for Jamie campaign and in the following week the Mr Lotus competition which is sort of beauty contest for the best looking All right. person uh, okay. or the I've really quickly got to wind it up yeah. I'm sorry yeah. Fred. Oh, and goodness. the one after that is with Stan Munro a big drag night as well huge the night there so get along to the Star Hotel come back after the break grab your bugle Please. we've yeah. got uh, the uh, president of the Melbourne Rainbow Band come and blow her yeah. come on. program called Squeal. Um, okay, we've been joined, very lovely, by um, Hannah Glynn, who just so happens to be the president of the Melbourne Rainbow Band. Hello, Hannah. Hello. How 
tell you now, I told everyone to grab their bugles before the break. <laughs> I told Hannah before that I nearly bought my recorder in today. That's about as good as it gets <laughs> to me. From grade four, and all I can do is play apples. But um, anyway, we're not here to talk about me. Let's talk about <laughs> Hannah and the Melbourne Rainbow Band. Hannah? What have, you, um, what have you been up to recently as far as the band goes? Right, well, the band was in uh, Mardi Gras at the start of the year in midsummer. Summer's the, really the biggest season for the band. And, um, and then we've taken a bit of hiatus at the moment because our musical director is overseas and he's like living it up and we're going, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bit of a junket, is it? Is no. it? <laughs> <laughs> you say living it up, but you told me but, uh, during the break that he just missed the hurricane that it is. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, about it doesn't get much more exciting. <laughs> Adventure <laughs> holidays, <laughs> like that's what they're all going for. Forget canyoning. Exactly. Just like go that. to the States. Why not? No, he's having a wonderful time, but the band's doing really well and um, doing lots of performances around town and we're looking, building up to a big summer next year. Well, I saw you at the fantasy, that was you playing... That the, was us at the fantasy Yeah, ball. that was, yeah, it was oh, great. It was yeah, it was fantastic. Wasn't it a great ball? <laughs> it was a good time. It was. I've never seen, the costumes are amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that worked. Great I just wonder what those people do for jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and they oh, make costumes. See, those, that's all they do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, office, <laughs> in front of their genome all day. <laughs> office workers They're in front of their genome. We're not casting nasturtiums, are we? <laughs> now, also, we've got the, the CD from the Melbourne Rainbow Band down the front here, Michael. Mm. Can we get a shot of that? How did that come about? Well, we uh, toured to America in 97 and um, we took a live recording, a DAT recording, and we've produced that into the CD. And it's um, for a live recording, it's really difficult to get good quality and it's a fantastic CD and we're really proud of it. Okay, and that's available from? That's available from us or from Hairs and Hyenas <coughs> okay. or Outlook Cafe. Alright, and where can they find? Are you listed in the community we're listings? We're in the also or? directory, we're in the community listings, we're See? out there. The also the directory. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. So if you want to find the Melbourne Rainbow Band, have a look in the yeah, do you also like directory. You can be booked for all sorts of things, weddings, bar oh, mitzvahs. Oh, everything. The more Brisses. glamorous, the better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you all always wear the same outfit or do you, do you get to put a really impressive get up on? Yeah. Uh, we always wear a uniform. It's just yes, part of the, I the idea is you've got to be Richard uniform. Richard thing. Yeah, Richard had his big red <laughs> his jacket thing. and his... Donger. It's Donger. What do they call it? It's a mace. 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 He twirls it. Richard's a very good tosser. Is he? Yes. I've done that. I've done that. No, we don't have a uniform at the moment. We're looking at something, but it's difficult to get fundraising for that. We're surviving. Something like, say, rainbow coloured? Oh! Yeah. Gee! Oh, what that <laughs> what is that? Inspiring. How did you get over to America? Like, how, who paid for all that? Who paid for the CD? And, oh, well, let me ask no, no. Uh, uh, we paid our own way for the tour. That's, that's the way tours are done most of the time, yeah. unless you're a rock band and you've got five people and someone sponsors you to do it. Oh, um, so we paid for it. We did it, you know, really cheaply, so most of the members in the band could go. We went to Los Angeles and San Francisco. Oh, wow. Um, and you're Palm Springs? No, no, no. The, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> was this, I'm not interested was this the no. tour that you actually did with the Golden yes. Girls? Yes, oh, the, the Golden Tappers. Oh, they're just My wonderful. My God, yes. they are. Well, I didn't they, do the Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> <too much. laughs> I was working in a cafe in um, Albert Park one day and the whole crew of them oh, came in yeah. and it, there was something in the Herald some that week about it and I had the clipping there so I got them to sign the, oh, the oh, um, oh, page great. for me and they saw it. No, 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 they're Australian. They're all over 50. And yeah. they tap dance and they oh, wear yeah. Great sequins and glitter and, and, and everything. Just so funny. And we, we were going to America and we we're thinking, oh no, there's over 50 women, they're going to be a bit scared by us because all these gay people are going to be running around and <laughs> having fun. And, that and is they scary. were worse than us. <laughs> 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 they were out later, they drank more, they were fabulous. Yeah, uh, hit 50. I'll probably look like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know some old people. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, I'll be one very shortly. Mm. You'll yeah, be lucky That's to make it. 60 and gay years. Now, we just wanted to talk a little bit about something and have a, a few views shared on something. We've all heard about the satellite media group um, that are running around doing bits and pieces at the moment. Michael, have you got some yeah, information I've, I've there you want to talk um, about? Prospectus during the week and well, really interesting, but I think it's their philosophies and that we maybe could just talk about a bit more here today in that sure they own a lot of all the, well, all, bar one, I think of the gay media, etc. But they do have some, um, some goals. They want to um, healthcare, um, retirement villages, sp specifically orientated towards the gay market. So, um, what do you think about should we be having our own? Mm. Uh, I know um, 
quite a few it's lesbians who've always said that that was something that was missing, like mm. older aged care for lesbian women, for example. Mm. Um, should we be putting ourselves into enclaves like that? Well, that's or? the thing. Mm. You know, we, we've been fighting for years now for equality, recognition, acceptance, acceptance yeah. and, and I, I just see that we keep putting ourselves back in these but little boxes all the time. But it's similar to having a gay venue. Been... Like, you go somewhere where you will feel relaxed and you're at home and you know, Definitely. no matter what... Show here. Okay, now don't have any music, so if I play wrong notes, you won't forgive me. No okay. one will know. We will know, we won't know. Okay, here we go. Okay. Oh, so oh, that was yeah. no, oh, oh, my God. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, you got it? Yes! Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Lint for Peter. Oh, Peter oh, gets God. lint. Now play, so play your favourite thing, I think. Um, okay. That, well, that was it. Okay. <laughs> That's all she can do. That's all she can do. I told you, don't ask okay. my two. No, we'll go, we'll go gimmick, okay? Yes. Okay. okay. We love it. Okay. Pick where this would be played. Oh. <laughs> Paul's house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, let me put the mounting. Shut up, let me I know someone who was hired to play that. Seriously, really? at the races. <laughs> paid money to play that so everywhere. Job description. Wow. <laughs> I played it. I lost it too. Is it done with a beer?